Sleep is an elixir. A good night's rest can reset and boost your mood, your energy. It can, in the long term, transform your health. But sleep can also be elusive. A third of us struggle with it, myself included. So, for all of you who crave better sleep, help is at hand. I'm Dr. Michael Mosley, and this is Sleep Well. This is a podcast series with a difference. We've designed it to help you get more rest. I'm going to guide you through some simple, scientifically proven ways to make it easier to drift off and tools for getting a better night's sleep. So, please, get yourself comfortable and let's begin. Whatever your sleep experience, it's likely that time is going to be on your mind. So it may be comforting to know that one of the best things you can do if you struggle to doze off at night and fixate on the clock is set your alarm and then turn the clock away. Leave everything else till the morning. In this episode, we're going to focus not on what you do just before bed, but what you do at the beginning of the day. Because one of the best things you can do to help you sleep in the evening is to get up at the same time each day and then to head outside into the morning light. It's all about setting a rhythm and working with the sleep-related signals which are operating inside your body. We'll dive into all this in a moment. But first, we're going to unwind. Whatever has gone on in the day, let's breathe and let it all fall away. Breathe in and out. Slow your breath, comfortably. With each breath, feel your arms and legs getting heavier. As I showed in the first episode, taking more control over your breath is one of the best things you can do to switch off from the day. It has a profound effect on the body and mind, moving us to a state of deeper relaxation. Just notice the sensations as you breathe in and out. As you breathe slowly, deeply, comfortably, relax, let go. Just be here. So, our breath has a rhythm, and there's another rhythm that is hardwired into all of us, our circadian rhythm. Driven by internal clocks, this rhythm follows a cycle of roughly 24 hours and helps determine when your body wants to naturally fall asleep. Researchers have found one of the most important things that can affect this sleep cycle is what time you get up. And this, the time you wake, affects your circadian rhythm more than the time you go to bed. It's thought that a big part of the story is exposure to daylight. Dr Christine Bloom is from the Centre for Chronobiology in Basel, Switzerland. When we talk about factors that are relevant for our sleep, one of the most underestimated factors is actually daylight. Since we live on a planet that alternates between day and night, it's not surprising 
that light plays a critical role in setting our body clock. Or rather, our body clocks. In each cell, whether that's in the heart, so the liver, even in the skin, each cell has a tiny clock that is ticking inside it. There is one central body clock located in the brain that keeps all of them in sync. The central body clock communicates the time of day to each cell and this way it regulates bodily processes in accordance with the time of day. It, for instance, makes you tired at night and it also choreographs the release of hormones at appropriate times. A key hormone in the sleep-wake cycle is melatonin, which rises in the evening and plays an important role in making us feel sleepy at night. But for most people, the internal melatonin cycle isn't exactly 24 hours. There is virtually a mismatch between the external sun time and the internal body time. We need to reset and resynchronize our internal biological clock every single day. It requires constant adjustment. And how is this done? By the light of the day. We have receptors at the back of our eyes that are not used for seeing. Their purpose is to detect light and send signals to a region of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, the SCN. This is one of your body's most important internal biological clocks. In the morning... When sunlight shines into our open eyes. The receptors start signalling to the internal biological clock that it is now daytime. And then this triggers a cascade of subsequent processes in the body. These receptors are specifically designed to extract important information about the time of day from daylight and then communicate this information to the internal biological clock located deep in the brain. The earlier the morning light meets the eyes, the earlier the next biological night will begin. Early daily exposure to daylight has the effect of resetting our central body clock, bringing forward the secretion of the hormone melatonin later that evening, and so helping you get into a regular sleep cycle. So even on grey and overcast days, I would encourage you to go outside and enjoy the natural daylight because it has characteristics that are extremely hard to reproduce with artificial light solutions. And on top, it's for free. So what's the best way to get the benefits of more morning light into your day? First things first, because when we wake each day helps set our circadian rhythm. So try to be consistent and set your alarm for the same time every day of the week, including weekends. And when you do wake up, well, the earlier you can get outdoors, into the daylight, the better. If you are not a natural early riser, don't worry. Just try to get out into the daylight within two hours of waking. Now it's time to dive deeper to reveal what's going on inside. Imagine it's morning and your body is being doused, bathed by a beam of sunlight. It's a delightfully warm beam. Your whole body 
is surrounded by golden, glowing light, a liquid glow. As light enters the eye, it hits senses, special senses that have nothing to do with vision, color, shape sensing, anything like that. They exist to pick up light from outside the body. And when they do, they send a signal all the way from the back of the eye to a part of the brain that's key to this story. Containing about 20,000 neurons and less than two millimeters wide, that's smaller than a grain of rice, is the suprachiasmatic nucleus, the SCN. The signals from the eye sensors with the marvelous name of intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells arrive at the SEN where the cells are keeping time across the daily rhythm. The light impacts upon molecules which are responsible for the timing of the clock. One of them is an enzyme that creates a cascade of chemical changes so that, about 12 hours later, in the pineal gland, deep in your brain, melatonin is produced. Melatonin is the signal to the entire brain and the body that night is approaching. As it is released into your blood, it travels all around the body, binding to receptors on the cells, and helps to make us feel sleepy so the body can prepare for a wonderful, deep rest. So early morning light brings melatonin production forward in the evening. Imagine the glow of this early morning light and picture again that glow surrounding you infusing you as you breathe deeply and relax more and more. And when the morning comes, if you can, do seek out that light. I hope you've enjoyed this exploration of light and the rhythms of the body. All the episodes are waiting for you to listen to in your own time on BBC Sounds. Next up, making friends with your bed. Rest well.